Thanks for joining in in this first episode in our series of Learning to Edit in DaVinci Resolve. My name is Darren Mostyn and this episode is going to look at setting up and preparing to import media into your first project. So over the next few minutes you're going to learn how to create a new project. We're going to have a look at the interface and explain the interface to you. We're going to look at the bins and importing media into there, the different ways to import media. And we're going to take a look at syncing up audio and video if the audio has been recorded separately. And I'd just like to point out before we carry on that the version I'm working on here is the free version of DaVinci Resolve. There is a paid version, Resolve Studio, and if you go onto the Blackmagic Design website, there is a, an area there where you can see the differences between the two. But the free version is really fully featured and is perfect for what we want to do here. So let's go ahead and create our first project. So this is the project manager where we organize and create new projects. To create a project, click down here, new project. So let's call this one Editing 101, and there's our project created. You'll see here these are a couple of existing projects that we've been working on, and this one here is in a folder, so you can organize your projects into folders. Just double-click, and you can see them inside there. Come back. You can only open one project at a time in Resolve. However, if you right-hand click and say Dynamic Project Switching, that will allow you to open multiple projects at once. To go into your project, just double-click. So once you've launched your new project, you'll land on the media page. This is the first of four pages in Resolve. You have a media page where we organize our media. We have an edit page where we actually edit the media. We have a color page for doing our color grading and a delivery page where we encode and deliver our final movie. The four pages, you can go in and out of these at absolutely any time. You can add media at any point during the project. You can edit, then you could go and do a little bit of grading, then you can go back and tweak the edit and back again, you can just really go in and out of these pages as you like. The media page is where we're gonna start, and this is split into five distinct areas. Up here, you have the media storage. This is looking at all the drives attached to your system. So here I have my, uh, my RAID, and we can click on a clip here and just scrub through. So this is the viewer that we can actually view any of the clips that we want to use. You see here some audio meters, so as I play that through, the audio level. This is giving us the metadata that's attached to that clip, so it's letting us know the codec and the frame rate and that sort of thing. And this is the important bit, this is the media pool. If the clip is not sitting in here, Resolve can't see it. So if I go to the edit page, you see there is absolutely no media at the minute. If I click on here and then drag this down to here, and go to the edit page, there's our clip. So the clips have to be sitting in the media pool in order for Resolve to see them. Now I'm just going to remove that clip from the media pool because there's something important I want to show you. I'm just going to right hand click on it, say remove selected clip, and click on this icon here. This is, opens up the project settings and you'll see here that the timeline frame rate is fixed at 24 frames per second at the moment. There's a pull down menu here to choose different frame rates, but the important to note is that as soon as you bring any clips into your media pool, this frame rate will then be locked. If you bring a clip in and it is a different frame rate, Resolve will warn you. So it's really easy to get your clips into the media pool. Just choose the clips that you want to bring in. So let's have a look here. And we'll take these uh, these four interviews, for example. So we can we can just play them in our player. And, and if we're happy, we can just right click and drag and drop them straight down like that. Uh, you can also bring in whole folders. So this is really good. If I'd want to bring this whole folder, I can just drag and drop the whole folder. And it keeps all the um, subfolders in there as well, which is really good. And what you can do is right-hand click and create a bin if you want. So we'll just call this, uh, let's call this interviews. And then we can organize our clips a bit better. So if we go to the master bin, we can take those interview clips that we grabbed earlier and just drop them into the new bin that we've just created. Another very cool tool in Resolve is the scene cut detection. So if I make a new bin here, I'm going to call it SCD. And what I've got here is a flattened QuickTime with some edits already in it. So this would be really useful for a bit of B-roll. And uh, what I want to do is get Resolve to actually split the clip up it for me into its individual shots. So if I right hand click on it and just come down here and say Scene Cut Detection, it opens up this new tool and all you have to do is press Auto Scene Detect and Resolve will now go through, analyze that flattened file and split it into the individual edits that were there before. So if I click on the first edit point that it's found, We've got uh, the last frame of one edit and the first frame of the next edit, and this is the second frame of the edit. So these two pictures should be pretty much the same, and this one should be different if the detection has worked. So let's go through, and they are indeed correct. So once you're happy with that, you literally say add cuts to the media pool, and the cuts will go to the bin that you had highlighted. Let's click on that. There's the bin that we had, and there's our four edit points. So that's a really quick way of just chopping up a flattened 
file. We're looking at this in thumbnail mode at the moment. You can quite easily split into uh, list mode. And the nice thing with list mode is I can now sort by whatever I want. So I could sort by codec, I could sort by file name, I could sort by start time code. It's really easy. The other thing we can do is have a look at adjusting the clip name, but without affecting the actual file name itself. So if we click on this shot here, for example, or you can click on multiple shots and right hand click, you can go to what's called clip attributes. And in here is the ability to give the clip or clips a different name to the file name. So we, want to, we might want to call this um, sunset. And you can see here the file name is still the same, but if we click on here, you can choose new headings. So we can have display name. Click in there, there's our display name, and there you can see that we've highlighted it sunset. You can change the display name of multiple clips at a time, so it's really useful. So now we're going to look at syncing up audio that's been recorded on an external device to a, a video clip. What we need to do is first create a bin. I'm going to call this sync. And let's get one of those interview clips. Uh, let's put interview four. And if I play this clip, you'll hear that this is just the top mic on the camera. So the quality is not very good at all. And what I've got here, you can create a new bin if you like for this, but I'm just going to drop it straight in. I'm going to grab this interview clip. This is the clean interview wave. You could create a separate bin here to keep your audio and video separate. But all you need to do then is right hand click on the on the bin. And you have four options here. So you've got time code or waveform sync and a pen track will allow you to keep the camera mic as well as the new audio. So I'm just going to do auto sync based on waveform. And now if we play back that interview, you'll hear that the audio playwright, his name was good. Herman Mankel. The nice thing with this is that that audio is now linked to that clip automatically, so I don't have to worry about it at all in the edit. So now we've actually got some media into the media pool, we should think about saving. If you look up here, this edited light is red, which means I've not saved for more than 30 minutes. So to save, we just say File, Save Project. And then what we could do is go to our project settings, go down to Auto Save, and say Automatically Save Project to Backup Project. And what this will do is do an incremental backup. So we're going to save eight versions of this project at a time. Press Save and we're done. So in our next episode, we're going to be looking at basic editing. Thanks for listening.